February 2023, Jay White lost a Loser Leaves New Japan Pro Wrestling match against Eddie Kingston. To call New Japan Jay White's home would be an understatement. Jay signed with the company in 2015 and immediately began training at the New Japan Dojo. He had his official New Japan debut as a young lion in January 2015. For the rest of that year, Jay did what a New Japan young lion tends to do, open shows and gets beaten. In 2016, Jay White was sent on excursion with New Japan's partner promotion at the time, Ring of Honor, where he would room with fellow ROH wrestler Alex Shelley while in America. An excursion is a vital part of New Japan's dojo system. A wrestler is sent abroad in order to get reps in and hone their skills. For Jay, this run was vital in getting comfortable and sharpening up the rough edges. No pun intended. After over a year of working abroad, it was finally time for Jay White to come home in late 2017. Prior to Jay White's return to New Japan, the company had been running video packages teasing the mysterious Switchblade figure. And in November of 2017, New Japan was introduced to Switchblade, Jay White. This was no longer the young lion of a year ago. Jay White was now a full-blown, knife-obsessed, villainous character. And he was immediately presented as a big deal, targeting the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi, to a match at Wrestle Kingdom for the IWGP Intercontinental title. This was the beginning of Jay White as we know him. Although he would go on to lose his big return match against Tanahashi, it became very clear that New Japan had huge plans for him moving forward. This was made evident when just weeks after his loss at Wrestle Kingdom, he would defeat Kenny Omega to become only the second ever IWGP US Champion. Despite being a popular pick to join Bullet Club, he would align himself with the likes of Kazuchika Okada and Tomohiro Ishii to join Chaos. That summer, Jay would make his G1 Climax debut, ending with a very respectable 12 points. While the G1 is usually full of upsets, seeds for the future were planted in this tournament when White was able to defeat both Kazuchika Okada and eventual winner Hiroshi Tanahashi. Despite losing the IWGP US title to Juice Robinson, White was headed for the promised land. The Elite all chose to step away from Bullet Club as their future was up in the air prior to the announcement of AEW. This left a gaping hole at the leader position for Bullet Club. There was no one better to fill that void than Jay White. And so he betrayed his Chaos stablemates in late 2018 to officially join Bullet Club, instantly becoming their new leader. By this point, Bullet Club was very much a prestigious faction that had been led by the likes of Prince Devitt, AJ Styles, and Kenny Omega. Jay had huge shoes to fill, but his insane work ethic and undeniable talent made this a match made in heaven. By this point, Jay was very much an established name in New Japan, holding victories over some of the biggest names in the company. His credibility was quickly building, which then gave him the opportunity to fully focus on becoming one of the greatest wrestling villains of the modern era. With the elite departing New Japan and officially forming AEW, New Japan needed fresh blood in the main event. They needed wrestlers to step up. Thankfully, New Japan had invested well in their future, and a guy like Jay White was easily able to step into the main event scene while being a credible threat. Jay would defeat Kazuchika Okada at Wrestle Kingdom 13 to start off 2019. This would only be the beginning of New Japan strapping the rocket to Jay, as the following night he would pin the newly crowned IWGP Heavyweight Champion Hiroshi Tanahashi in a six-man tag. This prompted Jay to challenge Tanahashi to a world title match, which the ace accepted. And so, in February 2019 and New Japan's new beginning event, Jay White would defeat Hiroshi Tanahashi to become IWGP Heavyweight Champion his first world title reign of his then six year career. I can only speak for myself when I say I knew Jay was destined for greatness in New Japan, but I didn't expect it to happen so suddenly. It almost feels like New Japan sped up Jay's ascension in response to Kenny Omega's departure. And to their credit, I'd say it worked. This officially cemented Jay White in the history books. And while his reign ended only 54 days later at the hands of Kazuchika Okada at G1 Supercard, we all knew that this was only the beginning for the Switchblade. Over the next several months, Jay White would become arguably New Japan's top heel. His post-show promos would see him blend reality with kayfabe, and he demanded your attention anytime he spoke. The special thing about Jay White's promos as a heel is that he doesn't rely on cheap heat. He talks down on his opponent and backs it up. He's so cocky and so good that all you can do is hate him. One of his most famous promos saw him on the brink of insanity after losing the Wrestle Kingdom main event. White was so convincing in this promo that people legitimately believed he was leaving New Japan. 
However, that was just great character work on his part, as he would stay with the company for a few more years. Jay would then lay claim to a few notable firsts in New Japan's history, including being the first person to defeat a G1 winner for their briefcase when he beat Kota Ibushi at Power Struggle. Jay White would also become the first ever Grand Slam champion in New Japan history by winning all major singles titles at some point in his career. White would begin to label himself the catalyst of professional wrestling, taking credit for many successes across the wrestling industry, including the formation of AEW. Jay's arrival in AEW became inevitable when the companies formed a working relationship in 2021. It took over a year, but he did eventually make his first appearance in AEW, showing up unannounced on Dynamite to help the super click against Rapongi Vice. Jay would wrestle a few matches with AEW and ultimately played a huge role in the announcement of AEW and New Japan's first ever joint event, Forbidden Door, once again living up to his name as the catalyst of professional wrestling. In the lead up to Forbidden Door, Jay White would once more defeat Okada to become the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. This meant that heading into Forbidden Door, he would hold the top prize in New Japan. Despite saying he wouldn't defend the belt at Forbidden Door, Jay would have to defend his belt against three men at once. Despite facing tough opposition in Hangman Page, Adam Cole, and Kazuchika Okada, Jay White would ultimately retain his title after stealing the win by pinning Adam Cole. This small run with AEW was important because it gave Jay a taste of what AEW was like and introduced him to a more widespread American TV audience. Over the next several months, Jay White would hold onto his world title amongst uncertainty within Bullet Club. Fast forward to January 2023, and we are now at Wrestle Kingdom 17. Jay White would once again be main eventing a Tokyo Dome show, facing his now longtime rival, Kazuchika Okada, for the world title. At this point, Jay has reached the pinnacle of New Japan in record time as a gaijin who came up through the dojo. From young lion to catalyst, any company in the world would be lucky to have a talent of the level of the age of Jay White. Upon entering what will go down as his final Tokyo Dome main event, for now at least, Jay White accomplished all there is to accomplish at the age of 30. Therefore, when he went on to lose in the main event to Kazuchika Okada, losing the world title in the process, everyone asked if this was it for Jay in New Japan. In his post-match interview, he accepted his loss but blamed it on his former stablemate Hikuleo. This resulted in a match between the two where the loser would have to leave Japan. Unsurprisingly, Jay lost this match, but many wondered if he would still work for New Japan via their strong brand, which is based in America. All those questions would be answered only a few days later when Jay White faced Eddie Kingston in a Loser Leaves New Japan match. There was no funny wording this time around. If Jay lost, he was out the door completely from New Japan. After a valiant effort from Jay, Kingston would pin him to win the match, which meant he had to leave New Japan altogether. After the match, there seemed to be a sign of mutual respect between Jay White and the audience. If this was really it, then we might as well send Jay out in applause after such a legendary run with New Japan. He came in a young lion, and he was now leaving a bona fide superstar of the industry, ready to explode in front of an American TV audience. But before Jay White could get his happy ending with New Japan, David Finley came out and attacked him, assuming control of the Bullet Club in the process. Over the next several months, it was widely speculated and reported that Jay White was heading to WWE. Despite the New Japan AEW connection, it appeared Jay was ready to step away from that ecosystem of professional wrestling and step into the isolated world of WWE. At this point, Jay had the right to make demands wherever he was going. He had already proven that he was just that damn good. And so, for the next few months, many anticipated his arrival in WWE. First, WrestleMania passed, and nothing. Then the Raw after WrestleMania passed, and still nothing. The silence was eerie. Where is Jay White? Well, the dynamite following WrestleMania, Jay White made his surprise AEW re-debut when he helped Juice Robinson attack Ricky Starks, and seconds later, Tony Khan announced to the world that it was official. Jay White was All Elite, signing a multi-year deal with AEW. This was a statement by AEW. Despite WWE being the company with the most momentum right now, Jay White chose to sign with AEW, and to debut him on AEW's first show after WrestleMania was the ultimate sucker punch. A man who conquered Japan was now wrestling full-time in America, and he chose the promotion that would most help him showcase who he was. Despite seemingly being kicked out of Bullet Club in Japan, Jay brought over the branding to AEW and labeled himself Andrews Robinson. 
Bullet Club Gold. Although a slow start at first, Bullet Club Gold truly began to thrive with the premiere of Collision, and with the additions of the guns to the group, they have become one of the best things on AEW TV in such a short amount of time. Switchblade JY calls himself the Catalyst, but I think of him as the Chosen One. Here's a guy who came up through the ranks of one of the most grueling wrestling facilities in the world, and then completely dominating and conquering said company in record time. He's not just a great professional wrestler, he's a great character and a great talker. He's also got the look of a star. There was a reason why both WWE and AEW were after Jay White when his time with New Japan was up. Because this is the guy you build your company around. Someone who knows the smallest fundamentals of what makes professional wrestling an art form. If you sign Jay White, you better have the plan of giving him the ball and letting him run with it. Because he can carry you into the future at just the age of 30. And there's not a single doubt in my mind that Jay White will be world champion in AEW sooner rather than later. Because he's the catalyst, the switchblade, the chosen one to lead professional wrestling for the next decade. AJ Styles conquered Japan and came to America at the age of 39. Kenny Omega did the same at the age of 35. Jay White has Omega beat by 5 years. When it's all said and done, Jay White will leave a legacy that will put him in the discussion for one of the greatest heels of all time, and arguably one of the best wrestlers of all time. It has all led him to this, facing off against the likes of CM Punk, because CM Punk himself requested to work with him. This is the story of Jay White, the story of the chosen one of professional wrestling, and it's only just begun.